everyone, and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creatives. Today we're going over some Super Mario Brothers enemies and bosses in 2.5 inch scale and 4 inch scale from Jack Specific. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. Now let's get to it. So here is the Goomba ripped straight from the game. It looks great. I love this figure a lot. It's very small and very cute. The eyebrows are all noodly and somewhat poseable, but they just pop back in position. The eyes are printed and the highlights and everything look really nice on that. His mouth is in a frown with some two teeth coming out of it. And we have one, two, three, and four different shades of brown. A nice chestnut with a tan, dark brown, and then sort of a coffee creamer looking kind of brown over here. Really nicely done for the figure and looks awesome in my opinion. It does swivel right over here with a tiny bit of pivot if you like. The feet don't move as much but it does move back and forward. You can look up and down a tiny bit and it's a nice figure overall and looks super cool. Next up is the Paragoomba. Basically the Goomba with wings. They both look really nice together but the Paragoomba does have these cool wings. You can swivel and hinge move all the way around. It's on a ball joint which is very nicely done for both sides too and it's super cool looking. It's great. These wings give it a more dimension and more life I think. It does swivel over here also and everything else is basically a copy paste from the Goomba itself so whether you want Goomba or Para Goomba you'll be sure getting a good deal but not if you stomp on them. It'll lose the wings and turn back into this. Next up is the bob -omb, this time cherry flavored. It's red flashing and ready to explode. The fuse is red up here. Nice light blue contrast over here with some yellow down here. We also have really nice eyes that look really good and this metallic finish to it with a gold key in the back. The key does swivel a little bit, the legs do swivel around, and it's very nice. It's good to just keep it in one position and let it sit, which is fine by me. You can keep the key turned in a different position, and that's pretty good for stop motion. But it's a nice figure, all things considered. Very metallic looking and really nice. I think this might be the guy I met with the cannons in bob -omb Battlefield from Mario 64. Really cute figure and adorable. Hucket Crabs are up next. They're kind of a new enemy that I haven't really encountered in my Mario days. It's pretty cute though. Their eyes are kind of adorable and of just very blasé in a way like he's a boring character if you want to talk to him I do like the red it's very shiny and good looking on him the claw over here is a really nice feature I kind of wish there were two in a way it does swivel a little bit doesn't really move up or down that much and the feet don't move at all they're nicely painted yellow and are pretty good it's a cute figure with not much going for it but if you want to have some kind of water level diorama you could always have a hucket crab pokies have always been super interesting enemies to me this is a really interesting figure I love how it's designed and how it's made. This is great. The spikes on top are huge, three of them, and then we have smaller spikes throughout the entire figure. But here's the kicker. You can take off segments just like in the game, which is a really great feature. And they do fit on top of each other with a neat little spike that adds more dimension to the figure. You can par him down to, I think, just even like one little thing. And it even kind of fits on the stand. The stand is a small piece that has a little peg on it with a disc up top and then a flat base on the bottom you can stand the actual head on here with some nice maneuvering and it looks pretty fine him and his little you know body cronies just circling around ready to attack Mario just make sure you're on a flat surface otherwise they won't really want to stand that much the bottom one is designed to stand on the stand so place that right there and it pegs on and put everything back together super easily and you have your tower pokey the pokies can also swivel at each base looking pretty cool. You can align spikes if you want and it's pretty nice. If you have two pokies you can kit bash them together taking the head off of one of them at least and the body off the other and then sort of siphoning them together to make a hugely giant pokey as an obstacle for Mario. Maybe Yoshi has to eat him or fireballs have to go through him. You need some certain thing to pass without dying. This is a really neat looking figure I think and this one's pretty small and cute. I recommend and getting more pokies for more height and more defeat for Mario. Switching gears to 4 inch we have the boomerang bro. The blue is very striking against the yellow and the tiny bit of red on the figure. We have some darker yellow for the limbs and head and a lighter yellow for the beak. The eyes are blue, the helmet shell and feet are blue. There's a nice tan down here and a white shell and the helmet with a really nice looking boomerang here. Pulling this guy aside for a second. This is wonderful. A nice little piece over here. It's painted pretty well. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not as far as the center goes 
pose, but it looks really nice. You can have the boomerang bro hold it in his hand like this, or like this. Either way, it'll be a formidable match for the Mario Bros when he throws it at them. This is wonderful. And if you have two and know about Paper Mario Sticker Star and have gotten to World 3 or so, yeah, they rhyme a lot. The fiery cousin of the Hammer and Boomerang Bros, the Fire Bro is a formidable foe. Really nicely done for this guy as well. Some great reds and whites on the figure. My one nitpick is that the fact that this is not clear. This piece right over here is very nicely painted and well detailed, but the stick should not be there at all. It, there should be some other kind of way to have him hold it, but alas, it's just this little stick right over here, and that's a shame. The gradient is really nicely done on it, and you even get two if you get one of these, along with a POW block that I'm not even going to bother showing. It's irrelevant right here, but this is a super cool piece that looks great. I wish it was made differently with the stick, but it fits nicely in the hand of the fire bro when he's ready to throw his fire at Mario. I've already reviewed this figure before in the Hammer Brothers segment of a different video, so I'm not going to go over articulation or anything, but he looks really great and the blue is very striking on his eyes compared to the rest of the red on his body. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Here we have the Lakitu, the bane of any Mario player's existence. He throws little spinies everywhere he goes and is a nuisance to all. This is a very nicely done figure. It is not available currently. I got a second hand, so there are some scratches, scuffs, and what have yous everywhere. But I'll have to admit, this is a really nicely done figure. The hair is really cute and sort of pointy. It's sort of one piece just stuck there. The glasses are adjustable ever so slightly, giving it a sort of nerdy kind of feel to this guy. It's wonderfully done, though. This is a really nice piece, these glasses. I think it's all just a translucent piece painted black. I wish it was painted black on the top, so that gave it a little more credence. But it's fine as is and looks pretty cool. These goggles are great. The head is really nicely done for this figure, and the little shell and everything is really cute. The arms are small and spindly. It reminds me of Sonic arms a little bit. And the cloud is really nicely done too, with some paint for the eyes and a tiny little smile. Noting that the cloud's a good guy, the Lakitu isn't. Why are you working for Lakitu, little cloud man? He also comes with a small little stand that is on a bubble. Let's put it in there and that's fine and all the little details are on the very bottom of the cloud very nicely done with that for articulation he does have a swivel over here which is pretty good you can move the glasses up and down by a small margin up and down not really that much for the arm and you get a swivel over here a swivel over here and a up and a down really nicely for his hand he can't really swivel that much over here and you can swivel him on the base if you'd like it isn't really irrelevant it's really relevant though just swivel him at like this and you're fine now this hand can hold something in it. Let's check that out. With some patience balanced or just leaning it on the figure, the spiny egg is a really cute accessory. It is nicely done. It has some good paint on it. And we also have some red. It's basically red with white paint. It's a nice little thing. But when you drop it, it turns into a spiny itself. The spinies are little enemies that plague me all the time, especially when I don't have a fire flower on me. The spikes are really cool on it. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little spikes. Good number. Nice white over here. The paint is around the spikes this time, which is pretty cool. They have to sort of definitely weave around with the paint that's nicely done. The eyes are cute and a little angry, little angry boy. He's adorable though, I love him. We have some good articulation for the little paws up front. You can sort of move them up and down a little bit and move the back paws up and down a little bit. Can he stand up like that? No, not really. He just kind of flops to the ground, but you at least can have him sort of in a little walking pose if you want, or just have him stand flat, flat or just have him stand feet flat in the ground. He does have all the numbering and stuff over here. If you want to flip him over, make sure to do it so you can't really see. But it's a really nicely done figure and really cute. I love spinies. They're adorable. Cousin to the spiny is a spike top. Just one spike on top. That's basically it. And it's kind of boring-ish, honestly. Paint is just okay as far as this goes, I think. It looks kind of, you know, this point over here. I'm not sure if it's supposed to point down or at least go all the way through straight. It does have some articulation over here on the front and back paws. It's very similar, but just a little bit different to the spiny. I wish I'd just have one enemy and stick with it, but this is pretty fine and looks cool, I guess. And it's a cousin to another enemy that is brand new for me. Here is the box for Buzzy Beetle. This is a brand new enemy that looks awesome. It's old 
old school, but it's brand new to us. Really nicely done box over here with the figures in the wave on the back along with the Buzzy Beetle brief bio over here. Collect them all. We have all these figures and now let's open this one. The Buzzy Beetle is basically the prototype of the spike top and the spiny without much defense except to fire. It has the same articulation as the spike top and spiny. The limbs moving a little bit. I didn't check it, but I think the tail, it doesn't move at all. Yeah, it's not a letdown, but at least we get the last member of all the original Mario enemies in 2.5 inch scale. This is very nicely done. I love the shell. It's the best part about the figure, a nice navy blue, as opposed to red, no spike on top, and a better sort of mask for the face. It looks really wonderful under there, and the little barcodes on the bottom as well. I really like this guy. He's very cute, and I'm glad to get some more enemies from Mario 1 and the Mario universe in general. Spike is an off-forgotten figure in my collection just because he doesn't have an accessory to go with him that I think would be way better. But in the meantime, let's go over the figure. Nice huge pink lips that are light pink. Big eyes that I think he's seen things or something. We do have a nice periwinkle color hair that's really good. A black shell with a white rim. We have a tail that doesn't really move or anything. And a drab olive green skin with nice little pads in the bottom and all the little barcodes and everything down here. Very nicely done for that. He does have some pretty good articulation too, going up and down and all the way around. He does get a swivel for his hand that isn't necessary at all. You do get a swivel for the leg over here and then kicking out this far and in. You can also kick it up and back if you'd like, but it looks like he's breaking his leg. As far as the accessory goes that I wish for him to have, it's pretty simple. Just a spiny egg painted black. That'd be way good, not only for Jax to reuse and repaint, but also for this figure to have. Maybe give him a different sculpt for his mouth that it's wide open and this is coming out or something, but that would be pretty cool to have at least for this figure. An accessory would really make it better. Again, this is a figure that could have had not much articulation, but it really succeeds in surprising me. I'm very happy with this figure, and maybe the next figure will see more or less articulation with that. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Here is the box for Monty Mole. He's very nicely done. On the back, we have Monty Mole, the rest of the wave, a brief bio, collect them all. Let's open this guy and see what's what. Monty Mole's a little chunky boy, and it looks like he has a lot of great articulation on him. He is wonderfully done, and I would love to see more Monty Moles. They're really great, inventive creatures, very cute and annoying at a lot of times. The whiskers can move a little bit. The head can swivel left and right, very nicely done. The eyes are really cute, the nose, the door, the little chubby cheeks are fun and the single buck tooth is really awesome I love that detail the little abdomen is all white he's a nice sort of like coffee creamer slash chestnut brown kind of color it's a nice little mix the arms do move up and all the way around we do have no feet articulation even though it does look like they are there's some nice pads in the feet as well as the little claws on the hands and feet we also have a small little tail back here with no articulation for that but for a figure that's 2.5 inches this is very 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 well done. I can't wait for more 2.5 inch figures with articulation like this. Birdo was an enemy once, now friend to Yoshi and I think friend to all, but let's at least appreciate her roots. Really interesting figure, I like this a lot. This is a modern incarnation of the character, but I always think of Birdo as the boss from Mario Bros 2. The eyeshadow has done really well, the paint is really great in this figure, the giant bow is red, and also the spikes are red. They're the same kind of red, I wish they were slightly, slightly different, but maybe they are and I'm not seeing it. Nice pink throughout with a darker pink for the spots I think. We also have some nice white for the abdomen and claws. It's pretty good. She has a ring on her finger. I'm not sure if she's married to Yoshi or something or she just likes wearing rings I guess. Interesting. We have some nice sort of like yellowy kind of pads on her feet and that's pretty nice. We have some swivel over here for her head. We have some going all the way around kind of for this. Her cheeks get in the way for both arms but you can kind of blow a kiss if you want her to which is a nice pose for her to get into or just have her do a sassy walk down the road. She does have some nice swivel over here at the legs but that's about it. I don't want her to have more articulation but I feel like with figures I've previously gone over in this video they could have given her more especially as she's a newer figure. Birdo should probably get a better figure in 4 inch and I cannot wait for that. And now we come to Boom Boom the often defeated boss in Mario Brothers 3 and other Mario games updated for the newer Mario games. He's awesome. I 
love how good he looks in this incarnation. Sure, I wish he was a 4 inch figure, but him being 2.5 inches for now is fine. He doesn't have that great of articulation though in my opinion, but he does have some great sculpting and paint. His abdomen is sculpted and painted really well. I do love the shades of yellow we have from very light to darker to a little bit brighter and then even darker still. It's a mishmash of different tones of yellow along with his body being a nice little tan with some nice sort of darker yellow stripes on that. We do have his back which is painted in red. Very nicely done for this and looks super cool. Seven spikes is the number of the day. We do have the little code on the back. I wish it was on the bottom and he does have some white claws and white toes and white eyes along with white fangs over here. The eyes aren't really painted on that great. It's a shame. The eyebrows are painted really nicely and pretty cool. And now for his articulation, his head doesn't move at all. I wish it did. We do get all the way around for the arm and a butterfly joint that makes no sense for the figure. We don't even get a swivel for the hand all that much. We get a hinge instead and that's basically it. The legs don't move at all. I wish this figure could have been updated a little bit better and had some better articulation, but that probably would compete with the 4 inch version. I do like this figure in concept, but in execution it isn't all that great, I would wait for the 4-inch. Overall, the enemies and bosses Mario faces are vast, varied, and threatening. They're all really nice looking. I notice a lot of them share a common color with yellow and brown, which is pretty nice and very earthy. A lot of greens also, a bunch of red, and some good other blues in the mix. It's very nice and it just gives them a lot of differences as well as cohesion. There are some really great figures in this bunch that I'd highly recommend. I would not not recommend any but especially get the Hammer Brother, Boomerang Brother, Birdo, Lakitu, Pokey, and Monty Mole. The rest are up to you, but I also think that each and every one of these has their own special place in someone's heart. While I am not primarily a 2.5 inch collector, these figures come in this size just for now, and I do find them to work well with the 4 inch. I think Lakitu bridges the gap as well, having the 2.5 inch spiny work well with this figure, and I hope you love all of these as well, no matter what your scale. These Mario characters may be enemies, but they're enemies you love to hate. So which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned!